Maximus Decimus Meridius, what was your best moment from this season? My best moment from this season? Well, be yeah. careful. Be careful. <laughs> Um, well, definitely, I think the victory, you know, that's always something special. I mean, I've had a lot of good moments, but a victory is a victory. And I think even when it's the most boring race on earth, if you win the race, it's still special. Agree. Mm. At the start of the season, some media thought the team would struggle this year. Where do you honestly think you would finish in the championship? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't expect to finish top five. I mean, <clears throat> you... You know what it's like, you, you do the best you can and if the car is good enough, obviously you can do better than... Just because you say, I don't think I can get fifth, doesn't mean you're not going to get fifth if you yeah. can. But uh, yeah, it was, there was no real signs that we would be this much better this year. So I thought top five would be a stretch. All right. Yep. Now, contrary, what was your worst moment of this season? Monaco. <laughs> Absolutely Monaco. <laughs> I think everybody agrees on that one. <laughs> Uh, do you like the track though? After all, the worst weekend of your two year? Weekends. The, the worst two weekends, both, okay. both years. Ah, uh, yeah. Do, do you yeah. enjoy the track though? It's something special for sure. I mean, uh, it's very challenging, I think, especially in qualifying. When you have done your lap, you're like, wow, that was really on the edge in qualifying. Yeah. Or, or in my case, over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gotcha. All right, Daniel. Um, Looking back at the whole season, what was your best moment and why? Uh, fortunately, Monaco? Monaco for you? I think the well, <laughs> the Saturday, the Saturday. Oh, right. <laughs> fortunately, like yourself, we've we've had some pretty good highs this year. Um, you know, one thing I hadn't yet done was a, a pole. So to do that in Monaco was made it probably more special to get my first pole there. So that was a a big highlight. And then, of course, as you said, the the win in Malaysia. Um, being on the top step again felt good, so I'm going to be greedy and say two moments. What was your worst moment from this season? I'm, probably everyone's expecting me to say Monaco, but it wasn't my personal worst moment. I think it was the, the worst moment probably for us as a team, but like I felt that day I did everything right, so it actually wasn't my worst moment, but sure, it was the worst moment of the season. Um, if I was to say my worst moment, just all good moments. <laughs> <laughs> Confident, yeah, I mean, for sure. I don't know. I guess, I guess the, the answer everyone's looking for is Monaco, so. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it was, it was... It was out of your hands, basically. Yeah. So yeah. it was still like a great weekend, I felt personally, but obviously the, the outcome was, yeah. was tough. Um, so yeah, it was, it was the first time I've ever not attended a, a post-race debrief. Um, I'm normally very good with that, but I just felt it was best to. And because my house was like 500 <laughs> meters away, <laughs> you I was were like, like let's I'm just go home. Go home and yeah. not talk to anyone for a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can, can imagine. Oh. Uh, alrighty. A lot of people said the team was wrong to replace Kvyat with yourself, and the media said they were very surprised. What did you think about the reaction at the time? Did you, did you understand their point of view? Were you thinking, all right, I'm going to prove them wrong? What, what was your sort yeah. of feelings? I mean, it's, uh, it's always a very difficult decision. And I mean, uh, I could place myself also in, you know, in, in the way, in his way, I would say. And it's, it's very hard. It's very difficult. But that's the way Red Bull works sometimes. And they, I guess, are looking also for the future. You know, when you get that opportunity, you just can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't wait to go, you, to go for it. And I just approached the weekend very neutral. I didn't care about all the comments, you know, the media was saying about the, the move. It was now up to me to prove, to prove them wrong. And yeah, and in one way, it was a very relaxed weekend as well, because it took a lot of pressure off because it was, I, I approached it as a learning weekend. And um, yeah, I think so far it has been going pretty well from there onwards. I remember it was probably the most watched press conference of the year mm. with you and Danny sitting in the front row. I remember yeah, I mean, every, everyone, everyone, everyone was waiting. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how they position the press conferences sometimes. So yeah. everyone was like waiting, who's going to hit who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was prepared, you know, I was just sitting there. <laughs> no, I'm just... But as you said, though, like from the outside, it's not that you, you called Helmet and said, Helmet, get rid of Danny, put me in. You know, yeah. it's, it's just how it works. And obviously, if you get that opportunity, it's, yeah. it's our job. You know, you can't turn it down. And 
exactly. you can't be sympathetic to a competitor because that's this is the sport we're in. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so then I guess to follow up, when you won in Barcelona, was any of your happiness actually a relief to have proven Red Bull was right to back you? It is something, you know, what helps a lot, I think, a victory. It's not everything because, I mean, you have to prove yourself over a whole season and then again and again. But it's something, you know, you, you come into a new team and then you win the race. It's like, OK, well, at least it's a very good start instead of a struggling start, you know. So um, not only, I think, just a relief to, to prove Red Bull, but also for myself, you know, because it was always like a target to win a race. And then once you, you win a race, you, you're like, wow, you know, that's something very amazing. And it takes a lot of pressure away because you've achieved something already like that. And then... Um, you know, you, you prove that you can win a race because, I mean, before that you can drive fast laps, you can have good races, but you've never won a race before. Yeah, I can definitely agree that it's the same when I won in Canada. It's, you believe you can do it and you think you can do it, but until you cross the line in first with all that pressure and, and on the world stage, so to speak, yeah. then it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like, a nice feeling. Okay, I, I can do it. Yeah, so yeah I, it's good. I, I, I feel you. After I joined, media asked you about increased pressure and your reply was always very professional. But was there a time when you did feel any? I think there's always pressure, to be honest, when there's, in general, within this sport, there's always pressure. Um, because as you sort of touched on, you know, you won in Barcelona, but it's a whole season and, and sometimes you're only as good as your last race. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess when you've got a new teammate, you know, your teammate is the only guy you can properly reference yourself from, as, as you know. But uh, you know, it's the guy in equal equipment. So at the end of the day, if your teammate beats you every race in the year, then you know you could be coming second every race. But if your teammate's winning every race, then you've had a terrible year. So there's always pressure. You know, at the time I was getting the best of, of Danny. My, my performances were generally better than his, so that was going well. Let's say on that front. But then obviously you've stepped in, and it's like it's another challenge. And it's like, well, I obviously knew you were quick, but it's like how quick? And then how's he going to deal with everything else? So. I guess there's pressure on, on both of us, I guess, but yeah, me to obviously make sure I keep, you know, keep delivering um, and don't, you know, get out qualified by half a second every, every weekend <laughs> because then, then, it's, then it kind of sucks. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, well, luckily that's not the case. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. What sort of teammate am I? <laughs> is, these are awkward questions. Um. Ah, you're such a lovely, caring, beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> beautiful teammate. <laughs> such a beautiful boy. Yeah. <laughs> we have to do that again, or you think that's all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of a teammate am I? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, be nice. Yeah, I, know, I joke a lot about... Otherwise, I don't give you any young. chocolates anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of teammate? I would say like a lot of a lot of interviews I've done, I get asked about you a lot. So um, by Dutch people mainly, I think generally, okay. generally. But uh, yeah, I get asked a lot about your age and it's like I, what I say is that sure, you're young compared to a lot of us, most of us or younger, but you're in racing terms. I, I feel you're quite old or quite experienced. Let's say it feels like you've, I guess, maybe through your father a bit as well, but um, I guess through karting at the top level and that you learnt quite, quite a lot at a young age, but it seems like the, like me at 18, for example, I wasn't used to the, the environment of Formula One or it, it was, didn't really feel natural yet at that age where it seems like you're a bit more accustomed to it and, and even like communicating with the team and that it, it feels probably more natural at your age than it would have for a lot of us. So um, yeah, young in age, but not so young in terms of motorsport experience and, and the motorsport world. So Daniel, what do you think made Christian most happy this year at the racetrack? Oh, drinking out of my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely good champagne, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think, I mean, sure. As a whole, I, I would honestly say the, the one two in Malaysia because I think both of us were, as a team, I mean, it's the best result you can have. Sure, maybe I was a little bit happier because I won, but as a team, you can't get a better result, you know? And uh, obviously your win in Barcelona, I'm sure he was 99.9%. .9 he was happy, but he, was, he felt sorry. But maybe it was like, because he knew I was probably disappointed. Yeah. So 
the emotions were probably more mixed where I think Malaysia as a team it was like oh both drivers will be happy enough and I think also the way you know first we had like a good fight we gave each other space and they were like and we, and they we, were at the pit were like oh my god <laughs> what's happening you know so I, yeah definitely I, I would agree on that one all right did you see him angry at all did I see Christian angry uh Angry, I don't know, for sure upset. Uh, again, I, I would probably say after Monaco on the Sunday. Um, even uh, we spoke on Monday. Uh, I, I didn't want to sort of speak to anyone Sunday night. So we spoke on Monday and I could tell, obviously we were both still affected, but uh, I could tell he was pretty down. So uh, yeah, besides Monaco, I don't know. I think we've, we haven't really Pissed him off too much, I don't think. Oh, luckily, not too much. We crashed a few race cars, but not that many. Yeah. Come on, it was yeah, okay. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> it was not bad, yeah. All right. Um, after Spa, a lot of people were getting on your back about your driving style. What did you think about that? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I always stayed pretty pretty neutral about it. I mean, of course, I wasn't happy at all after, after Spa, you know, after a good qualifying and then in front of your home crowd, so many people... They were there to support you and actually like within 100, 200 meters, everything just falls apart. Um, yeah, so I think it's always the most important thing is you have to believe in yourself and you shouldn't read too many comments. I think after Spy, I also deleted a lot of stuff from my Twitter hmm. and Facebook and Instagram. You know, I was not following anything from F1 anymore, just other stuff. And I think that helps a lot because you don't read all the comments. What was your best move on track this year and why? First one that comes to mind is, is uh, oh, there's a few, but first one is, is Monza uh, on Bottas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just, it was probably the furthest back I've ever come before. And in Monza as well, you, your speed is pretty much the highest of the year and you're braking, as you know, with, with little downfall. Yeah. So I think to get it right is even more difficult. So to do it from where I did and, and to make it clean, obviously that is always helps you know, keep, keeps the, I guess, respect from everyone, then that was probably my best. Yeah. Uh, what was your best move on track this year and why? Yeah, my favorite. Um, yeah, I think, well, last, last race in Brazil was uh, yeah, quite a lot of action going on. And I think, um, yeah, the move on, on Rosberg was pretty nice yeah. to go from third to second around the outside. And, you, and you're like really on the edge with the car. The aquaplaning was so Yeah, bad. it was oh. pretty bad. and. Yeah, that was a, was a good feeling, let's say like that. How do you think you've changed this year? Firstly, I'm sure you've got a bit more hair on your body through growing up and getting old. Mm, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> but maybe not physically, but uh, um, inside, inside. I mean, you're growing up, um, especially, yeah, traveling uh, around the world uh, makes you grow up very fast. And then with all the experiences from Formula One, that makes you grow up even faster. Uh -huh. And like the outside, like having obviously your profile has changed from say last year to this year. Mm -hmm. Has that, have you noticed like, uh, I guess there's more attention, but is there like uh, some, some cool experiences you've had with famous people or like anything? I'm like, just stay, I want to stay at home, you know, stay, have fun with friends. And yeah. I'm not like, oh, I want to meet this kind of person. I want to like meet a f movie star. I'm, I'm really not into that. Um, of course, you know, you get recognized much more in Holland, like has you that, have in Australia, lot, that I has guess. changed a lot yeah. from last year, yeah. where you could still walk around in Amsterdam quite unnoticed, maybe a few pictures, but like now it's pretty bad, I would say, yeah. Okay. I think it's also, I mean, because nobody has won before in, in from Holland, so I mean, then it gets quite a, a lot of attention once you win a race, so. I noticed that as well from 2013 to 2014. I think as well, you get with a big team, so that already creates more attention. And then obviously you, the results are coming. You're yeah. on, probably on TV more because you're running at the front. Yeah. And then it's, yeah, it keeps on going. That's the big team thing changes a lot. Yeah. What do you think about comments that the rivalry will increase between us next year? I think, uh, I mean, a lot of people are, in a way, it's cool that they're thinking about this because they believe that we will be fighting for a title. So mm -hmm. in a way, I take it like as a positive that they they believe in us yeah sort of thing um and they think we might get to the point that lewis and nico are fighting for a title and um and then i guess some of the comments are 
Nico, and, like based on Nico and Lewis's relationship, that you know before their sort of teammate and all that, they were quite close and all this, and then they the rivalry grew them, you sort of spread them apart a bit more and whatever. But um, yeah, I, t I take it as a in a way a compliment. I would like. I told them though, I would love to be in that position. Because yeah, for sure. <laughs> if we're fighting for a title, then it would be well, very I think we're nice. Both happy. Yeah. <laughs> then I think we'll, there would we'll be some take, more trophies we'll take here. the extra pressure. <laughs> yeah. When you're racing, how much fun are you having on a scale of one to ten, or is the concentration too great? That just depends where you are. You know, yeah. what position you are, and in what state. I mean, if you're catching someone, if you're defending. So I would say Brazil is like close to a nine or a ten. But I mean, if you're like struggling a lot with your tires and the, they're coming from behind, it can be it can be like a four. You know, it's like, of course, you're very concentrated and stuff, but it just depends a lot in which situation you are, I think. Yeah, I mean, sure, it depends on, I guess, your position and that as well. That mm -hmm. We can change maybe the number or the scale of one yeah. to ten. But I think generally Sunday is the best day of the week. Like Friday, you know, like practice doesn't excite me nowhere near as much no, as, sure not, as racing. Sure it depends how the race goes, but let's say at just before 2 p.m. on Sunday, if it's a normal race time, I'm like 10. Like I'm just loving Getting it. Getting ready for it. Yeah, so it's racing is, is the most fun. Like At the end of the day, you're a racer, you know, you want to go into yeah. the race and fight for and points compete and, with and compete and race for it, yeah. All right, how did you feel during those last 17 laps in Brazil? Well, I was second and then I dropped back to 16. And From putting the wets on? Yeah. Because we were oh, on yeah. intermediates, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that but was... But it was no point to continue. I mean, it was so difficult to drive. Yeah. And I was still, like, discussing when you pit and I was like, oh, my God. Well, now... Because we'll I was it. asking, I said, is Max staying out on inters? I was like... Yeah. I said, the restart's going to be tricky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean, at one point, even behind the safety car in the last second, I couldn't drive it. It was, like, just a boat. Yeah. So I was like, guys, I'm, I'm going to pit now, otherwise I'm going to shunt the car once we restart, you know? So... Then I was like almost last. I think I had one car behind me. Like, um, yeah, and I, I, I was about to touch the radio button. I was like, Max, just don't do it, don't do it. So I just stayed away from the radio button. I was like, just thinking myself, I was like, well, just calm down. Ah, to, to say yeah, like, like, what have we done? Yeah, sort of thing. I was like, oh my God, guys, we were like in second and now we are 16. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, once I got through the cars, it was, I was getting happier. And I mean, the feeling was there. I was, I was feeling good. The car was performing we really well. Car. The car yeah. had a lot of grip. Yeah. So then, yeah, I mean, at one point when I was like around sixth or fifth, I was like, okay, well, maybe there's a, a chance for a podium. And then once you overtake the, the final car to get onto the podium, then, I mean, it's a, it's a really good feeling, I would say, because in such a short time to, to pass that many cars, of course, was something, uh, something special. And I definitely enjoy that. And to not... I mean, to stay on track was in those conditions. was very difficult. I mean, pushing. the last sector was, I mean, yeah. I, I think you saw my like, near <laughs> crash. I mean, I was looking through some onboards, like nearly every driver, maybe not as big as yours, but mm. even Rosberg had a big moment. Yeah. I mean, it was like just to cross the line in that race, like to finish the yeah. race was already like, OK. Yeah, because my final lap, I was like one and a half seconds slower just because I was going really slow into the last sector because I, I didn't want to crash at all. And that was, yeah, as you Could know. Did you see Rosberg in, or they had? No, nah, he they was like 11 gap. seconds in front. So, OK. Yeah, it was a big gap. That was, that was fun. It was good fun. When you look at your trophies, which one stands out for you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think in terms of looks, the, the Budapest one. Yeah, um, I agree on that one. The third place. It's, it's definitely unique um, and it's quite traditional, you know, so it looks, for me, I look at it and I think, oh, that looks quite East European. So mm. um, I like that a lot because it is different. Um, but in terms of, obviously, I look and I'm, I immediately notice my first place in, uh, in Malaysia. Your first place is bigger in size from Barcelona, so I'm not that happy about that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, the one, I have to say, the one from Japan is actually also pretty nice. It yeah. has some good details in it. That's, I like that. They've always done, I think, with like the, the flowers. Well, yeah. I'm not sure the name of them, but they're, I look at it and I think, yeah, it's Japanese. Yeah. So. No, it's, it's cool. All right. Uh, what's been the best thing for you off track this year and why? Best thing off track? Oh. I think it's just being at home, to be honest. Just spending time with your friends and family, you know, just have fun. I think it doesn't need to be something very special. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just, just have fun with your friends, go-karting, 
this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what people don't understand, huh? Like if they're not involved in racing or it's like they don't understand how little time we get at home and yeah. see friends or family and... Yeah, you're just... Tra I mean, even when you don't have a race, you're always tra travelling for the simulator or like events and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I fortunately I had a... Um, well, I was fortunate to have a friend I went to school with who came to a couple races this year, Austin and Mexico, and like he's known me since we were, you know, 10, 11 years old. And he knows that I race, even then obviously I was racing, but he still didn't know what's involved. And he was like amazed with the hours we spend at the track, like from Wednesday onwards. And he was just like, yeah, I just thought you'd rock up to the track, do a few interviews and, and race sort of thing. Yeah. So it and was for cool for someone even to see more that. Because I mean, you have to leave Australia, you have to go and live in Europe and you don't see your family sometimes for like a long time. So that's even yeah. more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. As you say, it makes you grow up quicker, being away from home and all that. It is, there's positives, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If you could pick anyone to do a shoey with on the podium, who would it be? <laughs> uh, out of the drivers, for, I, I will say Lewis, because it was one race, uh, I think it was Austin, when I gave it to Gerard Butler. And he was laughing, but he, he sort of knocked me and he said, You'll never get me to do that. He's like, don't you ever, because yeah, I'll you never do it. it. So you should try it. So that like motivated me to just yeah. want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, but only, only if I win and if he's there, I'll, I'll like force him to do it. <laughs> and he won't have a choice because if he doesn't, I'm sure the whole crowd will like boo, boo or something. So yeah, that's, I think just to get, get back at him sort of thing for that, then mm -hmm. I'll, that would be fun. If you could take one of my trophies, <laughs> which one would it be and why? The trophy, I would take third position from uh, Hungary. Yeah. I mean, it's a very beautiful one. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I it's, as you say, it's, it stands out and it's like... In terms of results, I would like to swap in Malaysia, <laughs> of course. But in terms of trophies, I would definitely take that one. Yeah. Right. Other ones from the States is also not bad. Yeah. Can I have two? Uh, maybe. <laughs> See, that's like the States as well. It's got the American colors. It's got like the star. Well, I need to get one more podium, then we're equal, so then maybe we can share something. Okay. What are you most looking forward to in the off-season? Just not thinking about racing. Um, I'll still do things which give me some adrenaline, you know, riding bikes and yeah. all that, but um, just, yeah, being with friends and, and getting away. Like, a few of my friends have farms and stuff, so, like, three hours from, from Perth. Good it's temperature then in uh, Australia. You, you don't like the snow, do you? No, no, no. I mean. So yeah, that actually, yeah, you've just answered it for me. The thing I'm looking forward to most is sunshine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 35, 40 degrees. Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> if you could invent anything to go into the car to make driving more comfortable, what would it be? Easy. <laughs> Music. <laughs> <laughs> A sound system. Yeah. A sound system and in like Singapore and Malaysia, a cooling something that keeps you cooler yeah man those two races were so hot this year <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> yeah that would help a lot because even when you have your visor open yeah it's not cooling it's like no. warm air yeah so um what would yeah. you have well just the cooling yeah i mean uh, music well music it's all right once i'm in the car i don't need music but yeah the cooling absolutely maybe actually maybe in brazil we could have done with the heater as opposed to a, a cooling the, system yeah, something warm. and Gloves, like uh, something with gloves. Yeah, because that keeps your gloves um, yeah. well, from not getting wet. Exactly. <laughs> Is that what you're going to say or not? Yeah, because they got really slippery. Yeah, because when they and your hands get cold. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we have <laughs> such big... Sound, I know, we big sound issues. like big girls' blouse. Yeah, big issues we have here. Oh, all right, simple, simple question. What do you want to achieve in Formula One? Being world champion. I think that's everybody's uh, goal. Um, well, first of all, I would like to win some more races and then I think automatically when you, you start winning races, then you start fighting for, uh, for a world championship yeah. at one point, hopefully. Yeah. You? Same. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, uh, that's, that's, if there's one answer, it's that. But if, if, it's, if you go beyond that, then what do you want to achieve? You want to achieve fun and enjoyment and it shouldn't be only like work you should also you know enjoy i think those years because they pass by very big quickly part of our life. Yeah. yeah and yeah it goes quick so yeah sure uh, 
Who do you think is more famous, <laughs> me or you? <laughs> I, I think it just depends on which country you go. I mean, for sure, when I go to Australia, it's you. <laughs> and when you come to Holland, yeah, I mean... Uh, or Spa. Spa, there spa, was so many spa, Dutch yeah. flags, so... Yeah. It just yeah. yeah. I think in general, I think it's still more you. It's close. It's close. <laughs> the steering wheel has lots of functions. Do you know all of them? I do. Yes. Yeah, I do. Um, what, okay, giving myself a little bit of credit here, probably giving all of us some credit, but I can't multitask to save my life. Like if I'm on my phone messaging someone, you could be talking to me saying, oh, um, the house next door is on fire. I wouldn't even know like what you're saying. But when it comes to the race car, maybe it's because I love doing it but I can, I can do things on the steering wheel, I can think about the balance, I can talk to my engineer. I'm like multi multitasking at high speed. Yeah. So that, it sort of surprises me because anything else in life, I'm, I can't do that. But when it comes to the steering wheel and all that, it's- It's, it's quite amazing that what the brain can do, isn't it? Like yeah. the difference it can- It shows, I think when you enjoy doing something, yeah. you can be a lot more better at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I always have like after a break, like a winter break, when you jump back in the car, you're like, ah, oh, what was that again? <laughs> and then you need a few laps to, yeah. uh, to understand. <laughs> All right, Daniel, being so much in the public eye, do you find you think a lot about your hair and how do you look? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no offense, Lewis, but not as much as Lewis. <laughs> uh, oh. There's a few actually who, I mean, <sighs> It's a little bit natural to care about yourself a bit more when you're on TV. I would TV. say this year you improved a lot in the looks with yeah. your hair yeah. from before. You, <laughs> before you looked a bit funny, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you were a bit like a joker. Uh, I don't know, like you, so, it changes. I think it depends I mean, on your mood. When you look at those pictures, yeah, I think you have changed in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, I've grown up. But you went know. from like a seven to a 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, I, sure. It depends. Like if there's, if there's an event, maybe you care a bit more, like you want to look a bit good, but I don't know. Some, some days, like, I don't know, like now, like towards the end of the season as well, you're just tired. And sometimes you're just like, oh, whatever. I'll just put this on and, and just go. So I oh, just use a cap quickly. To cover yeah. It up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so it depends, but yeah, Sure. I mean, everyone likes looking, looking cool. Decent. One way or another. Um, it has its moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You? Um, to be honest, I, I'm always wearing a cap. <laughs> like, I think 95% of the year I'm wearing a cap. So. Okay. And you're not really shaving yet, so there's not much to I really do. maintain. I do, like every three days. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay. So even like that, like, if I look close, there's probably things that I could trim and like this looks like really it bad you did. but yeah <laughs> <That's> but <actually> <laughs> anyway i don't know some days you're in the mood to like look good and some days you're like oh i'll just look rough and Depends on being a guy is easier isn't it choose three words to sum up your season three words so no arms butts just three words three words oh that's already two <laughs> <laughs> good Cool and exciting. Okay. <laughs> English isn't your first language, is it? No. <laughs> Yours? Compelling. Man, I don't even know what Stupendous. compelling means. All right, come on. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid, yeah. All right. <laughs>